Are you appointed by God? If the answer is no, I'm not appointed by God, then thank you very much. I don't want to hear about it because you don't have the right to talk in the name of God. Welcome everybody to another episode of Where's God Today? You're tuned in to the Mehdi Has Appeared TV. Please call us. We're uh, waiting for you to call. God bless you all. The two numbers on the screen are in front of you. Um, yeah, feel free. I'm joined today by my brother Jamil, as always, yep. and our good brother Hamid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. God bless you, brother. Yes. So, our topic today is a very important topic. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've alluded to this in the past. We've mentioned that um, there is a new publication by um, our father and master, Abba Sadiq, from him is peace. Um, the book is called, or the... It's called the Manifesto, um, the Manifesto, the Mehdi's Manifesto. You can see it in front of you right now. The Mehdi's Manifesto is a 30-page document uh, available in multiple languages, and those languages are increasing. And it essentially explains the ethos behind what the Mehdi is here to do, what the Mehdi is meant to accomplish. But before we get into any details about what is within the book... Um, it's obviously important for all you out there to know who Abba Sadiq from Him is Peace is. Yeah. And that's the reason we've got our guest with us here, Muhammad. Now, Muhammad was, well, Muhammad is a very, very special believer. Um, he has a particular um, story to tell, which, please feel free, like, um, we'd like to know, like, okay, so, uh, from what I understand, you grew up in Egypt. And yes. you're from a Sunni background. Yeah. And um, obviously you had the, well, please tell us, you had the, the idea of there being a Mehdi, but you didn't know. Yeah, basically I grew up, I've always heard about Imam Mahdi as part of the culture and like mm -hmm. the religious programs and, and the books and all that. But it was not such a crystallized concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. It almost became like a myth. You know, it I grew is, up yeah. hearing about the character of the Mahdi and like everybody else in Egypt, I grew up Sunni, you know, with the Sunni school of thought. And um, as I grew up, I at the same time, I always also noticed that the world is getting worse, progressively worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Uh, you feel like invaded culturally and um, until a point of time where that really took a toll on me because I felt like to make it in this world, I kind of have to sell out. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, it was this unspoken thing in the air, you know, there's always this like competition ongoing of like increasing in corruption and like keeping up with every new trend, every new fad that comes and yeah. And till I reach a point of my life where at the same time, I've always been trying to be religious. I've always trying to keep up with prayers. I was trying to, be good, but basically. it just didn't work. Yeah. There was something missing. You just know? for context, you're an engineering graduate, right? Architecture. Um, architecture. Architecture. Okay. Okay. So you graduated from architecture. You're in your twenties at this point. Yes. Okay. Um, um, yeah, like late teens, twenties, and tamam. at that time, like 2008, I'd reached a point where, like, I just wanted more God, and like, yeah. I <laughs> wanted something in this world other than like just like what's the, the front industry. value of everything. Yeah, I felt yeah. there's more to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we watch all story. these movies, all these series, and like you feel like there has to be more in, in life yeah. to life than just like this day in, day out, like stacking Routine. money and like all mm -hmm. that stuff just didn't make sense. And uh, and so I got obsessed with the ideas that God can communicate with us. Mm -hmm. Why maybe we don't ask. Yeah. So at that time I reached that and then this idea really took over me and I started like talking to God from my heart mm -hmm. and I was on it for like five days I kept I remember saying to God God I know you exist 
back then I was ignorant. I was like, but I feel like I don't exist to you. Stuff mm-hmm. like, you know, I just wow. didn't know any better. I just said that. Mm-hmm. And then I kept in every prayer asking God to give me a sign. And then by the fifth day, by complete coincidence, a friend of mine in architecture school, a colleague of mine was at my house and he had a USB stick and he was like, uh, he put it on my laptop and then I found this folder called The Arrivals. Mm-hmm. And I've never heard about it before, but the name caught me so much. Mm-hmm. Like the Arrivals. You know? yeah. I opened that folder and then I found the names of the episodes and the first one, the, intro- the introductory one, the intro was like about symbols and signs. Yep. So for me, I was like, this is the answer of God. Yeah, this it's is a, a sign. sign. <laughs> and you open the episode, it's full of signs. Yeah, it talks yeah, about yeah. logos in our day and age yeah. and what they mean and uh, where they come from. Yeah. So I instantly paused it. I'm frustrated. Mm-hmm. And my friend is looking at me. It's like, Hazem, have you lost your mind? Yeah. Like, it doesn't get what's wow. happening. Yeah. But I, for me, I was like, oh my God, answer it, me. Mm-hmm. And, a, and a sign full of signs. Exactly. I, it was 52 episodes. I watched them um, back to back, mm-hmm. you know, and then I remember like, and it, the, the, the thing that like hit me was like, because it, it kind of like split the world into black and white. Yeah. Like I've, as if I've always lived in this gray zone, gray area, not knowing right from wrong. And this what was like aching me all my life because yeah, like w- there's no compass. There's no, there's no role model to anything. You yeah. Know? And I remember I reached the episode that was called Hashem's films. It was like right. the, mm-hmm. very later on in the series. And, uh, we it was getting to introduce the makers of the documentary of the documentary yeah. and i remember as soon as i laid eyes on uh, abu sadiq uh, our master alayhi salam I, I felt in my heart and i looked and thought to myself even logically why wouldn't he be the mahdi mm-hmm. you know and is it because he's wearing jeans and wearing modern clothes is he supposed to come in a jalabiya <laughs> on a horse yeah. it doesn't yeah. make any sense uh, and then I finished the series, done my own research for the next year and a half or something or year. I had a bunch of questions. So then I started contacting a previous website that had the, the, the other followers and some of the people who were associates of Abu Sadiq back then, alayhi salam. And I sent them my questions and then they were like, why don't you... This is the forum website? Yeah. Okay. And okay. then they were like, why don't you email Abdullah Hashim? He's mm-hmm. in Egypt. Wow. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was so ecstatic with the news and then I emailed him at once. And from the first email, because I had this idea that he most probably is the Mahdi mm-hmm. and, I'll, and I'll get uh, to why uh, in a second. I emailed him instantly. I was like, I'm going to be your driver in Egypt. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm wow. to, I'm just about to finish architecture school. I have a few months after me. And I'm going to be a driver in Egypt. And he was, I, I, I had a bunch of these emails until he got back to me. Where it's like, I, I, I knew, I knew because like subconsciously I know like from Quran, for example, oh, you who believe if you want to address the prophet, then present something between your hands, you know. So I felt somebody like this, you know, somebody yeah. who God chose to come in this day and age and like split truth from falsehood completely. Mm is a deal from God. It's a big deal. Yeah, and, for sure. Sure. and he probably is contacted by a thousand people every every yeah. day. And like, I have to show my commitment and yeah. dedication. And so then after a few emails, he agreed to meet me. And uh, I went to meet him and it was such a, an epic day because yeah. it, was, it wasn't even a season for rain and lightning and stuff. But that day, it was very... Uh, thund- yeah, the, the weather was full of thunder and lightning and stuff and mm-hmm. wow. we met at a place and it was such a moment uh, yeah. that's like out of this world and uh, and as soon as I laid eyes on him I was I thought to myself I was right mm. and because when I looked in the series at him السلام, and, and I thought of I went over all the hadith that I've read in the Sunni books yeah. back then uh, of the descriptions of Imam Mahdi, yeah. how he's neither tall nor short, mm-hmm. and his his uh, medium between both, and how his face is bright as the moon, mm-hmm. his hair is like s- soft and and goes down over his shoulders. 
uh, broad between the shoulders, broad thighed. So, um, just for context, the yeah. Sunni uh, the Sunni narrations about the Mahdi are different from the Shia narrations about the Mahdi. Um, essentially, you're talking about the the Mahdi who's born in the end times, not the Mahdi who disappeared over twelve twelve hundred years ago. Twelve hundred years ago, sorry. Yes. And um, obviously, you having an understanding um, made you very aware of the signs that you know you just talked about. Yeah, I mean, one of the main main descriptions that everybody knows that agree on, the descriptions are mainly the same between Sunnis and Shia. Okay. Um, that he would be, his like from his father's side, he'd be Arab, and from his mother's side, he'd be Roman. Yeah. Right. That was also Applicable, Czech. That's, yeah. that's mm-hmm. what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so Sunnis and Shias, in terms of descriptions, they don't differ as much as you much, know. Yeah. But, there's, there's, but yeah. within both of them, there's this... Divide. Distinction, like like two lines of description of yeah. two individuals, yeah, which course. we've come yeah. now to know. What yeah. Abbas Sadiq Al Salam have uh, revealed to us, it's talking about the Yemeni mm-hmm. and the Riser, yeah. or Al Qalam. Yeah. Right. So one is like Tolam Brown, like uh, who, Moses, like oh. Moses Al Salam, like the narrations say. Yeah. Yeah. And we have the descriptions of Muhammad Ibn Al Hasan Al Salam and the descriptions of the Qalam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Al-Salam. That's yeah, that's exactly what I'm referring to. There, there is that distinction, that difference, but um, yeah, this is a like fascinating stuff. Like, um, I am very curious about one thing. Like, um, you said that you had this feeling inside. Like, can you describe the feeling, like, of when you actually met Abu Sadiq from him's piece? It's basically, oh my God, I don't know how to say it. It's like uh, part of it is like I saw in him and his work. Mm. It's like the protagonist, the character of the protagonist of the superhero. You know, yeah. I grew up like watching all these mo- movies, all yeah, these yeah. series, reading books and all that stuff. So basically, all. Oh. Mm-hmm. I like that. that this is, yeah. he outdoes any other superhero you read yeah, about or watch. Yeah. This ro- it's, it's real life, life first yeah. of all. Yeah. <laughs> Second of all, they're really saving a planet and a civilization where humanity is really going down the drain right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to the abyss. Well. Yeah. And every day that passes, we realize this more and more. Exactly. So Sana, the, the 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 name Sana comes from the Imam, right? Giving you this sort of kunya, which means like helper, right? Yes, exactly. So you as a support, a support and helper of Abu Sadiq, as yeah. you said, you wanted to be his driver. You were one of the first people to meet him and to serve him and to yeah. uh, recognize his reality, actually. And um, I think it's pretty cool that you give like this analogy of like. You know, I'm a, also like a movie geek in, in like comic book mm. kind of guy too. So yeah, for me, it says like, that. you know, your journey at this stage, you wanted to break free of the Matrix and you found your Neo, the, the exactly. chosen one. Yeah. And at that stage, you hadn't come forward as like the, the Neo. He hasn't come forward as the Imam, yeah. but you'd recognize that ahead of He was ahead Morpheus of time. and Neo. Exactly. It's like the all, all in one, yeah. right? And uh, yeah. as the support and helper, I know obviously because I've known you for a while now, but for the viewers out there, uh, you were with Abu Sadiq. Uh, from his peace and peace be upon him during a lot of sort of pivotal moments in his journey especially in Egypt and you have this uh, event of the Arab Spring and the Egyptian Revolution that uh, mm-hmm. you were his companion during that and you know during that time he was all over the news and stuff so yeah please share us what share with us what it was like during that phase as well yes so I met Abu Sadiq alayhi salam from his peace in late 2008 and then the revolution happened in 2011. Yeah, yeah. so you're with him like four years by this point. Uh, yes, yeah, three, oh, three, four years. Three years. And I remember Amazing. one of the things that happened is that at that time, one time he brought a book of Imam Ali a.s. Mm-hmm. That's called what Imam Ali a.s. has said about the end the times. times. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in the chapter of Egypt, the book basically has chapters about all yeah. the different nations in the end times. Mm-hmm. Sure. And in the chapter of Egypt, it talks about the revolution. Mm-hmm. So he basically was saying, do you know, he showed it to me and he told me, do you know that Imam Ali Islam spoke about the revolution that happens in the end times? Wow. And of course, I was very excited. I was like, subhanAllah, glory be to God, you know. And in, in the beginning, it was like very few individuals in the square and stuff. And the people got fed up from many forms of injustice in Egypt. Mm-hmm. And then we decided to go. And Abu Sadiq is like, his his heart is Imam Hussein alayhi salam mm-hmm. I've always been and yeah. Imam Hussein alayhi salam is like the master of yeah. revol- 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 revolters you know and mm-hmm. had the highest values uh, that he called for during in his revolution in Karbala 
and sacrificed everything yeah. in that revolution and set an example to everybody yeah humanity Absolutely. yeah and so so Basadik like spoke to us like me and a bunch of um, or a group of the, our friends and associates back then and mm -hmm. we used like we have to go and there's nothing too much to give a revolution um, we have to go and participate there are people here that are suffering there are people here that are uh, exactly that, yeah this life can't go on for them like that mm -hmm. you know yeah. so we went there and we it was uh, I mean the revolution itself if I speak about it it's like would take many episodes yeah. because yeah, it was just sure. really Chaos really really crazy. epic yeah. yeah and there was this spirit in the air of like yeah. God wants this yeah. you know yeah and there was the spirit of like the Mahdi mm -hmm. is there with you Egyptians yeah and for me, I was like, I knew that because I believed that he is a Mahdi at th that time. Mm. And I could see the, the, the dynamics of what was happening at the square. Is basically the square. It was like this table. It was like this circle, basically, the Tahrir Square in Egypt. Mm -hmm. It had many fronts, uh, like entrance and exit, exits, where like the pro Mubarak thugs and the the their militias whether in uniforms or civilian or clothes or yeah. trying to infiltrate and capture as many people or yeah. shoot them or hurt them or detain them. And I could see wherever, whenever they were getting breached, Abbasad al -Qasem would just walk there and those people would be fortified and succeed in, oh, in closing back. this front and, and securing it. Yeah. Then the yeah. other, and we would know by them shouting and they would find a commotion and like, ah, and the people getting back, you know, retreating yeah. he just walks there boom yeah, yeah. the wall is he fixed Bro, i just got wow. spine chills from you that's it it really that's huge man uh, the whole time i felt like that you know yeah. and so and i'm watching this and like subhanallah yeah. you know and we so we would like keep going he basically was circum was circulating the circulating yeah. yeah circulating the square and yeah. And you and you see the blessing, the barakah of God everywhere he steps, and how oh, wow. God fills in the gaps and <sighs> of the voids of the people, you know. Mm -hmm. And the revolution itself, you know, you you would look and you'd find all of a sudden the Egyptian people who are not known for being organized or being able to stand in queues organizedly. <laughs> You've been to Egypt, you know, <laughs> you know. And, exactly. Uh, all of a sudden, it became like a beehive, yeah. where like people automatically you know needed yeah split into teams mm -hmm. some people are like breaking the breaking stones and some people are moving these stones to some people and and then some people are making tea some people are healing the wounded yeah. and like what is happening you know yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah. until amazing really. yeah until the people won the even though they didn't know they had a leader amongst them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was the one successful revolution and the one that really made a change in the whole future Just, of Egypt yeah. from yeah. there on. And what the manifesto points out, mm -hmm. it explains how a revolution without Moses oh, yeah. at the head of it, the Moses of the time, yeah. is doomed to, f Failure, to failure. Exactly. It's like, uh, it's, yeah. uh, I believe it says, like a body that's running without a head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. true, definitely. Absolutely. This is the thing, like um, that manifesto makes very clear certain points that all those with a revolutionary heart would learn from, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. um, this is the thing, this, like there is no revolution like this revolution. And this is the revolution of the soul. This is the revolution that basically God wants for you out there in order for you to save yourselves. Mm -hmm. like, I can't put it in any better words than that. I really can't. And um, yeah, like, so, okay, so you've got the revolution. Now, I know for a fact that you weren't the only one there that was around Abbas Sadiq from him is peace. Um, and we were talking about this earlier, like mm -hmm. um, Abbas Sadiq from him is peace had been doing some works. He'd been we were, like, I, f I found Abbas Sadiq from him is peace from Tad's. Um, you found him from the arrivals. Yeah. The arrivals um, uh, was followed by the arrived. And he, like he's always been working in yeah, exactly. making these productions to enlighten people and wake them up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, can you testify to what you saw in the time you were with Abbas Sadiq from Him's Peace from 2008? I assume in 2008 there wasn't too many people around him. 
No, there were, there weren't too many people. They mm. were like his neighbors, basically the people from right. his neighborhood who that liked group, him, right? who had like a friendship or like yeah. a relationship with him. Right. And uh, I remember, like, so they weren't like followers of the Al Bayt. They were like normal Sunni Muslims, but yeah. who agreed with him because they found that there's a lot of Corruption. like logic and truth in okay, his okay, 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 in okay. In, yeah. in his own um, dealings and in just like. An aura, you know, it's like Abu is very special. It's man. very special yeah. character, you know. When, when I think back on those days, you know, I would go to his neighborhood in Mbaba. It's a very busy area. Uh -huh. It's like, um, like what they would call in America, like the ghetto, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. And uh, he, there he was. He was like half American, half Egyptian, mm -hmm. and at the same time, like has this like aura of the Ahl al-Bayt around him. He would yeah. walk in this neighborhood with like a green galabaya sometimes or sometimes in in jeans and normal clothes. Yeah. He uh -huh. was extremely humble, extremely modest. Uh, he was very aesthetic in, in his lifestyle where he lived in a small apartment. He ate very, very simple, humble food. And mm -hmm. then... And the subhanAllah, one of the things that really gave me the certitude that he yeah. is from God is that yeah. I would find he would um, like spend a lot when he would give others, yeah. like the poor people wow. in Egypt. Yeah. When he would see them on the pavement sitting there and asking, he wouldn't do what the rich people in Egypt would do. They would exactly. give the change, yeah. you know. But Sadiq would give, would give them something that would actually make a change in yeah, their yeah. in their week in their month in their year many times actually yeah. wow so <coughs> so so i found this like I, it was the first time i've ever seen anything mm -hmm. like this you know mm -hmm. that I see somebody who live such an aesthetic lifestyle and but when it came to giving others he yeah. was extremely generous exactly and that was only like what you would hear about Prophet Muhammad yeah. وسلم, or Jesus yeah. from his peace or the prophets and messengers. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. he has yeah. the, you know, yeah. action speech louder than words is something that we was exactly. mentioning yesterday. And the, you, when you see the actions of all of these like false leaders around the world, you see that it's like the reverse of what you're saying about Abu Salik before he even, you know, came out with being, well, the, before yeah, he came out saying he's Abu Salik with Imam called yeah. him Abu Salik. Yes. Um, the the crime, knew, exactly. Basically. So and, yeah. and about this, by the way, when I would tell him, alayhi yeah. salam, that, um, that I believe that he is the Imam Mahdi, yeah. he, would, he would deny it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He, he didn't wish for it. He wasn't exactly. like, it wasn't his thing at all. Yeah. How I saw him, how yeah. he was, he was someone who has completely given himself to the Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Yeah. Wow. To serve them, to spread their message, to seek and reach the Imam, yeah. alayhi salam to prepare the world for the Imam, as he believed this is the duty of every believer, every Muslim, every human. Yeah, so wow. he just did his part, you know, his duty, as he saw mm. is upon him. Until later, when when we reached the Yemeni, so... How many years later? Like, we reached the Yemeni a few months after the revolution. The revolution was in, in, in Yanayr, yeah. in January. Yeah. And we've heard of Imam Ahmed al-Hassan alayhi salam and his da'wah and uh, this door opened in March, March 2011. Wow. <laughs> but he salam, would speak about the Yemeni and Imam Mahdi in the arrivals and in the Tad series in the Al-Haft yeah. al-Sharif book. Yeah. And uh, we were... So basically the journey with Abu Sadiq alayhi salam, you're watching a journey of a hujja of God, you mm -hmm. know, a hujja means like the argument of God. Proof of God. Yeah, the proof of God. Yeah. And in Arabic, as you know, like literally the argument of God. Of God. Like, yeah. like if like somebody asks, like, why didn't I know that? Why didn't I saw Abu Sadiq alayhi salam like reaching from like just an, a normal average human being all the way to being the qa'im of Ali Muhammad alayhi salam that yeah. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam said if I uh, if I meet him if I live to see him I would serve him for the rest of my days yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam yeah the sixth Imam yeah, for sure. so I so you I got and we still do you know and mm -hmm. we and you saw the 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 obedience to God the yeah. 
dissolving of the self, the mm-hmm. dedication to the cause, to the Ahl al-Bayt, السلام, to Jesus, السلام, to all the prophets and messengers, yeah. until we come today and our da'wah, our religion is not exclusive to Muslims. Yeah, it's not exclusive to Jews. It's not yep. exclusive yeah. to Christians, Sunnis, or Shias. It is literally Open to everyone. Everybody can yeah, including find, including the atheists, including the like whatever walks of life. Yes, it's from amazing. all these different schools of thought, yeah. their prophesied savior mm-hmm. comes together with Al Qaim and the Yemeni, our yeah. Qaim and our Yemeni that we're calling them to. Exactly so that. Yep. If you're yep. looking forward to Jesus' second coming, then look what Jesus said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's who's going to come with him in the end times? Mm-hmm. If you like from B- Buddha, whatever religion, mm-hmm. whatever. Background, school absolutely. background religious background you you find that our proofs are deeply rooted and goes back in the first books of all these different prophets and messengers 100% yeah, yeah. 100% and exactly this is what we're saying about this leader and this is the first point of the the manifesto is to find this leader and uh, I have a, a hadith slide that I want to just read which sort of ties into everything you've been saying because you see His characteristics from 2008 until now have never changed. He is as humble as can be. He displays the morals and manners of the Al-Bayt. He is fierce. He doesn't stand for, you know, being oppressed by tyrants. He goes forward and, you know, as one man rises against and really just changes the the landscape of a whole country being Egypt at that time. And, and he's not afraid to speak exactly, out against the exactly, um, tyrants. Exactly. That's the, like, that's the the important thing. Like, yeah. the same as al Hussein alayhi salam. Who basically was outnumbered in a in an unbelievable way, yeah. Like he obviously is right now standing up to all the oppressors, yeah, with all their power. And that's But, what I mean. Yeah. He's even doing so to, from then until today. There's no change in his he uh, was, in yeah. his stances and and what he's come with. He's he's consistent. He's you know he's he's here to serve God and that has never changed yeah. mm-hmm. so I just want to bring up this slide and I read it and uh, it talks about it's from Imam Ali about the platform of Egypt and it says and I learned that a, the great platform of the Mahdi at the end times will, uh, will be from Egypt and the carpet shall be unrolled and uh, unrolled to him by a man whose strength is iron and his heart is strong and God knows a uh, God shall open to him the opening of the knowers and I mean this sort of as you said He has the, he has this like heart of Al Hussein, this this heart of iron, and he comes with the morals and manners of the Ahlul Bayt, and uh, yeah, this the member and the platform of Egypt is something that he established whilst you were there uh, in Egypt with him, right? Yes, absolutely, because what had happened is that the Yemeni had appeared yeah. since 1999. The people have let him down. He appeared in Iraq, and people pledged allegiance to him once and twice, and then they did with him how Betrayed they him. Yeah. He, he, exactly how they did with Jesus, a.s. when yeah. they all left him. And, uh, and, and and much worse, much more, mm-hmm. yeah. and in much more dangerous times, until the Imam Salam, Ahmad al-Hassan Salam, went into absence, went into yeah. ghaibah, Occulty. which yeah. was prophesized as well. Yeah. Of course. Abu Sadiq is the one who, like that hadith says, unrolled the carpet mm-hmm. for him, and yeah. and with his works and gathering the believers for him and giving the da'wah and the message of the Ahlul Bayt, Salam. Specifically the knowers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And um, until the Imam Ali Salam reappeared from his his ghayba and came and appointed Abdullah Hashim yeah. as the Qa'im and the riser of the yeah. family of Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Uh, When was this? Can you tell us the day? That was in 2015. Right, like so. When the black banners were raised. Okay, so um, between that time, so between the time of the revolution. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, there, no. But, um, between the time of the revolution and 2015, that's we're talking like a four-year period. Um, so in March 2011, uh, Abdullah Hashim, for the first time, like became infatuated with the da'wah of um, Ahmed Hassan, right, and became like. No, I believe to it. in the arrivals, the Yemeni was mentioned. Yeah. Right, but he yeah. became like completely connected to it, like as in directly. Right. Yes, in 2000, in March 2011, we came across, or like he basically announced mm-hmm. on his series, announced to his followers that the, right. the Yemen is Ahmed al Hassan. Okay, the revelation okay. of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so basically, it was anonymous until that point is what we're trying to say. And yes. um, okay, so from that, of. yeah, from that um, sort of revelation, right? Um, the next what four years 
became a process of committing more and more to Ahmed Al Hassan from him his peace mm-hmm. and um calling to him. Like, well, not just calling to him but being teaching his knowledge, teaching yeah. his message. It's being, now like yeah, this is it being directly involved in his da'wah and um sort of elevating. Right? Exactly. So what right. happened is that Abu Sadiq as soon as he um made that revelation that the Imam Ahmad al-Hassan is the Amani of the family of Muhammad mm-hmm. and um, he mentioned dreams that he that he had and, and, wow. the, and the synchronicities in the Al-Hafta Sharif book which is like so many chapters and by the and the coincidence of the same time that Father reached it or uh, basically published the chapter of Al-Hafta Sharif about the Amani mm-hmm. and the even in the rev- the revolutions that were happening in Egypt, they talk about the Amani at the same time. So, and Ahmad from Basra as a character that's mentioned in several narrations. Mm-hmm. So it was just like d- divine timing. It was like oh, the divine so timing no of God. Yeah. And from there, and Ahmad Hazrat Salam came with a whole lot of knowledge, a whole lot of no doubt. Yeah, of sure. secrets that the Ahlul Bayt Salam had kept mm-hmm. and said that the Yamani would reveal or the Mahdi would reveal. And yeah. Ahmad Hassan, the Yemeni, is the first of the Mahdi's. Of course, yeah. And from that is the supremacy Mahdi, yeah. of Allah and the abandoning the supremacy of the people and and so many, many, many things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Abu Sadiq Salam opened the door of, of Hijrah to those who wants to support the Yemeni and uh, Imam Ahmad Hassan. This is what I wanted to ask you about. Go yeah. Ahead. And people started co- coming from many different countries from all over Europe. To Egypt. To Egypt, exactly. Right. So they were gathering around Abbas Sadiq from him his peace in support of the call of the Imani. Exactly. Right. And the, the call of the Imani was the, at the time, the white banner, um, the banner of allegiances to God, right? Yes, at that time. Okay. Now, um, there became a, a sort of like the reason we're re- referring to 2015 and making that a sort of pivotal point yeah is the okay so during the time that ahmed al hassan from him's peace was in occultation um as you said he was betrayed and there was a separate movement in iraq which basically proclaimed itself to be representative of ahmed al hassan from him's yes. peace but had no connection whatsoever to him. They were the ones who betrayed him. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And which which they, happens with all, all the prophets, the prophets had happened with all the prophets right. and messengers. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very pivotal moment. It's an important point in the the sort of timeline, right, um, of this story essentially, because it's the usurping of the call of truth, right, in order to promote falsehood, right? They were benefiting of the knowledge of Imam Ahmad al Hassan and like using when his he, name to yes, when misguide. They were like, yeah. they weren't. The, it wasn't misguiding as much as like, it is true knowledge is the 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 message of the Al Bayt Salam, and they were profiting from it. Uh-huh. Like, okay, they were so deceiving the believers. They right. were taking advantage of the goodwill of the people. Basically. Exactly right, and. Um, what had happened is that the Imam A.S. having been betrayed and and oppressed they, uh, and and they caused the forces of of Saddam mm. back then to and and involved other other um, forces Saddam, as well. Saddam was gone in two thousand three, so like this will be the government, not not Saddam. So it was like no, before he was gone, that was the punishment for what they had done to Imam Ahmad Al Hassan A.S. the fall like, of Saddam. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he predicted the fall of Saddam in 2003, yes. but in 2007 was the betrayal, right? That's when they attempted to assassinate Ahmed al Hassan. Yes, but... Okay. So, so what had happened? Because you asked about the office, because you know yeah, that yeah, was yeah, very... Yeah. Complicated, of course. Vast, you know, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. very vast... Uh, yeah. it's such a uh, big history. The yeah, da'wah of Imam Ahmed al-Hassan sure. yeah. and But the, if we're talking today about the history of the da'wah of Abu Sadiq salam that's like a whole different of course, story, yeah. you know? And uh, so, yeah, so we're talking, we were talking about like Abu Sadiq salam he opened the school in Egypt, the Hawza, as mm-hmm. it's called, the, the schools of the Ahl al-Bayt are usually called Hawza. Yeah. And to, we, to study together the books of Imam Ahmed al-Hassan salam mm-hmm. and most importantly, to live by them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. up to today, what's happening in the da'wah, 
And that's what people don't understand. They ask us or, or the communities of the Ahmadi religion of peace and light in different countries, why are you guys living together? Why shouldn't each couple have a separate apartment and live in a separate unit from, <sighs> like, what, what are you guys up to? What, what is this? And they're... Mm-hmm. They don't understand. We started this in Egypt. We lived yeah. together. We're like yeah. 40, 50, and then 100, then 150 people in Egypt. Because that's how believing communities have always lived when they had the man from God. Yeah. When the yeah. spirit Basically. of God was amongst them. Yeah, we saw Every- the same with Jesus in the, the verse that we read yesterday. Yeah, exactly. I, w- I wanted to say, I just wanted to say this point. Mm. Like, um, okay, so basically you've got the man of God, right? Imagine this man of God is a source of light. Mm. Right now, you're in the darkness. Unless you gather around the light, right, you will be affected by the darkness. And essentially, that's what this community does. It gathers around the light in order to spread that light, to carry that light, to spread it around the darkness, to make the darkness dissipate. And that's necessary from every man of God. Like, every man of God has to have... A, like a support network in order that his message which is the supremacy of God and what obviously God wants as in God establishing the rulership of God it's necessary for their support the support to be there and this is what you're describing you know like because, people gathering yes exactly because as you experience now yeah. like with the messenger of God or yeah. the proof of God in creation every day is a new matter Yeah. Every day is a new matter. And yeah. like how God is every day a new matter. We say it in Arabic. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, so we have, so how can you miss out on that? Yeah. Of course, you know? yeah, exactly. And at the yeah. same time, how can you like exercise the teachings of the prophets and messengers like selflessness, uh, um, sharing. You're constantly refining, basically. Yeah, and like, Like Self-developing and all the, and, and, yeah. and studying the words and the parables yeah. and the, the yeah. knowledge. And, and there is a divine plan. There's a mission. There's mm-hmm. always a mission. Mm-hmm. Since the time of Adam, all... Do it till now. Oh, till yeah. now, which is to establish a divine just state. Exactly. God wants a believing a community. Of heaven, exactly. Basically. And this is the third point in the manifesto, which is creating a community, right? Right. And I have another slide, which I'll just read, and they can put it up on the screen. It's very short, a few words. But um, it's, again, another prophecy that was fulfilled. And it says, and the people of the West go out to Egypt. Uh, and this is this period that we're talking about between 2011, 2015 and onwards. Yeah. And you see the likes of like Una who's from Egypt, you know, Abu Abdullah's from UK, uh, Javid, and you have, you know, Jacob, for, uh, Hamad Riza from, uh, again, UK, UK Wales. Yeah. So all these people are coming from the West, uh, Car- Caroline, uh, they're all, you Germany. know, Germany, going from the West to go out to this, this being in Egypt. And then you guys create a community and you share and you live amongst each other, just like what Jesus said that his community was to live by. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, tell us, like, you know, we ha- we're living in the community here now, but this is like the foundation. This is like the cornerstones of the community that we have now. What was it like, you know, being amongst Abu Salih back then and having that community? Because this is the, again, one of the, the three chapters of the, the manifesto and something that's important to, to, to raise a divine state. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, living in a community where that's led by a man from God mm-hmm. who has the spirit of God in him, who is infallible. Is, is a completely different experience than anything that we've ever experienced before. Yeah. It's, it's like we, throughout all these years, we'd see divine sustenance. You know, when we yeah. had no idea how we would be able to sustain to all those people who are joining us and God opens a door out of From nowhere. nowhere. Yeah, for sure. No and, um, and, the, and when everybody does their part, when everybody serves, when everybody becomes selfless and... and cares about everybody else and and He's you find the divine yeah. sustenance you know coming down and the blessings and the success yeah. and the expansion and prosperity of all so it was really like something to behold you know no mm-hmm. doubt no and doubt. living with him alayhi salam seeing him and seeing this scenario unfolding around him yeah made us understand the gospels and the divine books the, the scriptures that we would read on a whole different level. Yeah, you were really living it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you would, and you, you see, you see what they, yeah. they were talking about, how they lived, how... Yeah. yeah, you get it, basically. Yeah, you know? Um, I wanted to ask you, um, like, in reference to what we were referring to earlier, like, so obviously you've got that gap, like the 2011 to 2015. Now, in 2015, 
there was the declaration of innocence from the like the usurpers that we mentioned in Iraq, right? Um, how did you feel, and what did you like? What did you witness um, at that moment when, in January, twenty fifteen, the declaration was made and the lifting of the black banner happened? Well, the news of the death of King Abdullah is something that anybody who follows the Ahlul Bayt, any Shia was like expecting to mm, exactly. be a, a signaling sign of the appearance so of Imam Mahdi. Yeah, I think this was even, you know, quite popular in Egypt, which you mentioned earlier was like a Sunni country, right? Yes, yeah. Everybody Everyone spoke about it. it. Yeah. They've always spoken about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then when it happened, mm -hmm. like nobody, yeah. nobody talks about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, nobody mentions it. Yeah. And we're the only ones who, our da'wah, on that day, yeah. the black banners were, were raised, mm -hmm. which are black, as mm -hmm. prophesied, that the, exactly. the banners of the Mahdi are going to be black. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be from the east. Mm -hmm. Everybody expected it to be like a bunch of Arabs on yeah. horses <laughs> yeah. with black banners, exactly. wanting to just run around. Sh mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't even... <laughs> Yeah. Like in some desert somewhere, yeah. like with tents yeah. and like just a sort of tribal move. He's basically. better with nomads, we mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, it's like a supremely intellectual dawah. Yeah. Like nothing Something competes with yeah. nothing competes with exactly. our call it's on earth. Online mm -hmm. We on have, internet. yeah, we have invited and hosted like religious PhDs from all different countries. Mm -hmm. They came to us. They commended us on our religion on our community our teachings and some of them like admitted on camera on record yeah they find it superior to anything they've ever come Seen. come yeah. across yeah. and they themselves uh, testified also to you know like from his pieces morals and manners too yep. yeah yeah yep. yes and and they, the they even saw professors. it absolutely yeah. and uh, and yeah so yeah it's amazing yeah. right but like, um, yeah, I was asking about that moment. You were there, weren't you, when the when Abu Sadiq from his peace declared his innocence and declared Ahmed Al Hassan's innocence from the usurpers in Iraq. I want to know how that felt, and I want our audience to get like how in that moment. Look, Abu Sadiq like, for years before that, mm -hmm. when like with the representatives of the office, he had. That's what the hadith that we were talking about, that he had the patience yeah. of the saints. Let me just read it and bring it up on screen Go and then ahead. we'll get into that. So again, it says, he is patient, the patient of the saints. And he raises the black banner by God, the one who split the seed. He is the one who paves the way for the Mahdi, which is exactly what we've been mentioning yeah. throughout this episode. And he is the one that obviously raised the black banner in 2015. But right. yeah, carry on. Exactly. So like, imagine like him knowing that those people, he sees their contradiction with the teachings of Ahmad al-Hassan. Yeah. And he sees their ungodly ways. Like hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Hypocrisy, their materialism, mm -hmm. them being after money and many other things. Yeah. And yet he has to play, to play along until the right moment. This patience, yeah. not everybody has it. Nobody yeah. else has it, yeah, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. um, and so until that yeah. day, you know, so he would like stand up for, for what's right and what he knew was right, what mm -hmm. he believed in. But still wanted to, what, till the last minute, he wanted to keep the community together. Like Imam Ali, yeah. basically. Yeah. No, not only that, but wanted like to Moses, give them a like chance, also, right? Moses, to repent. He wanted to keep any Israel yeah, together, yeah, yeah. you know? Right, but like at the same, like he knew their reality, but like God is merciful, God gives them the chance to sort of admit their um, wrongs and come yeah. into the light again, right? Yeah. And, and keeps that door open till the very last moment when there is no chance they'll come back. Exactly. Right. So we were mm. very happy to know we were like on the moon because we were finally relieved of, of those yeah. hypocrites. Yeah. yeah, literally. Yeah. And yeah. today, if you go see the, the white banners or Facebook page, like, where is your Ahmad al Hassan? Where? Uh, and mm -hmm. everything that they issue, everything that come is, comes out of them completely contradict, contradicts anything that, that Ahmad al Hassan Islam stood for yeah. and stands for. Yeah. And uh, bro, like the simplest thing for me, right? And this is the this is the one argument that always defeats that side, as in the the office in Najaf, is what happened to the the glad tidings of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Yeah, for why starters, did, why, yeah. yeah. Why did Abdullah die, mm -hmm. and your Mehdi's not here? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yes. 
But what can you say? The hypocrites always expose themselves, you know? Yeah. Anyway, we've come to the end of this episode. Really sad to say that because yeah. we, we like, honestly, we can talk for the, like, we can talk for hours about this <laughs> and you know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I really want to thank you for joining us today. Man. Yes, thank thanks you. for coming, Sam. Thank you. It was yeah, thank you for like, having um, giving us that insight. It was yeah. amazing, man. And thank you. Big time fun, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, like uh, all you out there, make sure you get onto everything we've pointed out like as in the QR codes for the books and so on. Manifesto, the read the, the manifesto. Yep. Mm -hmm. Read the Spread manifesto. Spread the manifesto. Yeah. Big time. The goal of the wise as well, that's available online. We've told you that. But before we go, we want you to um, check out all of our previous episodes. Where is God today? Question mark. Wigged. W-I-G-T on YouTube. And uh, God bless you all. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow.